This is Pharaoh's Visor of dsdatabase.org and today we're going to take a quick look and do a video review of the iSmart DSMM or otherwise known as the iSmart Multimedia. First off I'd like to thank Real Hot Stuff for providing the sample. Um, you can check out their US website at realhotstuff.com or their uh, Chinese website at realhotstuff.hk to buy the iSmart MM if you are interested. So if so, we can begin now by booting up the DSi at the bottom. At the bottom screen here, we see that the icon is Fish Tycoon, and it's quite similar to the iPlayer in hardware, so it uses the same icon. Once you turn it on, you get to the iSmart plugins menu, and you can see that there are three plugins by default, and they are the Nintendo DS games, the GBA emulator, as well as the movie plugin. There's also space for you to add your future or homebrew games and applications, so you can stick in other emulators or whatever else you like into this endless list. So by default, your first option is the Nintendo DS games, and you boot into a menu like this. The top screen is just a logo, the date, and the time. I suspect you can change things up if you use the skinning engine. At the bottom screen, you have your list of games and folders. There are two display modes. So the first one has this grid sort of appearance and with their icons. The other is a list and I prefer the icons personally, but there are two options. Um, up at the top over here, up here, you can see that it keeps track of which folders you're in, which is particularly useful for those that organize their games according to folders. Um, this button just goes up a directory and goes back out of the menu. This bottom icon here is shows whether you're loading or not. This icon changes the brightness if you're using a DS Lite. And of course it keeps track of what version of the firmware you're using. And this last thing that doesn't actually look like an icon is just oops, the settings. So the first option, I can't tell if you can read this, it says pink. And basically this is where you'd select your skins. And again, plenty of room for hundreds of skins and you would just select it. The next one is the brightness, again. And over here, this little GBA icon gives you the option to control what happens with the bottom slot on your DS Lite or DS. And basically, you can link your GBA game with a DS game. You can set the rumble. And unfortunately, I don't have a DS Lite on me, so I can't show you guys how that works. The next one is language settings, and this shows all the buttons and what they do. Um, for the most part, they're pretty obvious. A is OK and yes, up and down, left, right. So now we have, for the most part, seen this menu. And there's also uh, individual game settings. So if you hover over a game like this one and click X, you get three settings. The first one is multi-save, which gives you up to four save files for each game. And basically what this allows you to do is um, play the game on separate save files, which is to say if you have some siblings, you guys can all play one game and don't you guys don't have to fight over the save file. So 
one person would use save file number three, one person would use save file number two, and so on. But it can also be used for, I don't know, you can get creative with, I don't know, abusing glitches and cheats and so on. Uh, the next one is cheats, and you can turn them on and off. Uh, and there's a separate menu for all the actual cheats, so you can toggle which ones you want. The last mode option is called mode, and basically you get the option between patch and clean. What this means is that patch will give you all the extra features of the um, iSmart, but clean will maximize compatibility. Under clean, you will have no extra features, no soft reset, no real-time save, real-time guide, and so on. Nothing. It'll run just like the retail game, and that's how it maximizes compatibility. However, for the most part, any game aside from the one newest game that doesn't work, you'll probably want to keep the mode in patch regardless of whether you use the special features or not. So now that we've chosen all this, you can boot the game by tapping it or of course clicking the A button on your, the actual A button. And let's see. I just started a new save file again from from the multi-save feature, so it's starting fresh. And let's see, obviously the game boots up, but there's also an interesting other menu. This is the in-game menu, and it can be accessed by clicking L, R, Start, and Select. Your brought to this menu and basically you get the option of again brightness for DS Lite users. Um, this would return to the iSmart um, menu which we don't want to do. This will bring you back into the game. Of course that's not particularly helpful so we're more interested in these six features. So, feature number one, game guide. Basically, this lets you pull up a text file from your micro SD, and here is the one that I brought. And this is a walkthrough from I Love AOE. And as you can see, it's very clear. Um, Hmm. Uh, there we go. That's just clicking it wrong. Um, you can scroll through it pretty smoothly, and it's very responsive. It's very clear, and it bookmark bookmarks where you last were. However, it does break your lines. So, for example, this image at the very top doesn't show perfectly. Actually, it doesn't show at all, but the point is, it's completely broken. However, it is a very useful feature, so not being too harsh on it. The next one is cheat codes, and again, this will just let you toggle which cheats you want. And this also counts as a real-time cheat feature so you can turn on and off the cheats in the middle of a game so if you want max coins whatever that is in the middle of a game you can turn it on and then turn it off later there's also the real-time save and load save saving doesn't take too long and you get up to four slots which is quite nice so if we go and load that save again, it doesn't take too long. But you can hear that there's glitchiness in the audio, and that does happen from time to time. The next feature is slow motion, and this will slow the game down 
depending on what speed you set it at. This isn't the best feature because I found that it's not very consistent from game to game and as you can see it was on 25% but the game was running pretty close to full speed if not full speed. Last one is free cheat. I don't really have the time to do this all in this video but free cheat will let you create your own cheat codes, very simplistic ones. So I'm I will link to a video, the Supercard video, and it features, it functions exactly the same. So, moving on to next icon, we have the GBA emulator. The GBA emulator is obviously to play GBA games. And you can choose what game you want to play. And let's see just gonna pick this one because it's a good demo of what I want to show. If we look at the starting video you'll see that it stutters a bit but in the actual in-game uh, the gameplay it flows pretty smooth and this is Winx Club so oh I skipped the video but so it's not exactly the most demanding of games but for the most part, if you are planning to use the GBA emulator, you're going to have to live with the fact that there is some glitching here and there. It's not perfect. To make things go smoother, you can choose to skip frames. And what this will do is make your frame rate lower, but it will make the game run closer to 100% speed, if not all the way. Um, you can turn sound on and off and with it off it may run a little better but I don't find that it does. I guess it's more for the fact that sometimes when it's not running at full speed you get a lot of glitchy sound. The next is save state which is just like the real-time save feature on the, G or on the DS games. There's also cheats similar again tools you can take a screenshot and uh, hmm. you can take screenshots of where you are you can remap your keys so if I wanted to use Y button for the A button instead and so on uh, and lastly, there are version information, language options, and so on. I didn't want to go... I'm not... I don't have too much time left, so the last thing I wanted to show is the movie setting. So, there is music. It does play music, so... Um, so you can... Uh, close the lid and still move left and right with the L and R buttons but um, the shuffle features and randomized order are all hidden in this options and if we go here you can see that well you can see that it could go random order if you can read it that is there's also of course the video player for most part they play all the f all the formats they advertised and they do recommend that you keep resolution at 640 by 480 or lower and I find that it does run best obviously with the lower resolutions but you can go a little past that and still be fine So I'm just loading up an episode of Bleach right now. And you can continue from where it was last. So as you can see, the quality is pretty sharp and the seek function works very well. This is 640 by 480, by the way, and it is an AVI file. The quality is pretty acceptable on a DS. It is exactly the same as the Supercard and the iPlayer. Okay, I'll turn this. 
sound off. So you can see that the there's pause and play, there's a seek feature. And of course there's still the options up here. And the menu does have a bit of lag when you have something on, so be aware of that. Here again, I don't think you can see, but you can display it in the original aspect ratio, or you can stretch it to fit the full DS screen. There is brightness, a backlight timer, and it does support subtitles, and this is SRT, the very standard subtitles. Again, there's a whole slew of formats that it supports, so RMVB, AVI, MPG, and so on, but be aware that this isn't the best substitute for a portable media player. It does only play a f it doesn't play high definition, not even close, and it does stutter on some of the harder formats and so it's a nice bonus, but it's not a full-fledged media player. But again, this is completely comparable with the iPlayer and the Supercard DS2. So that's about it for my review of the iSmart. I think... Oops, I'm completely out of batteries. I think it is well worth purchasing, so if you are interested, head over to realhotstuff.com and get your own iSmart MM, or of course you can get the very similar Supercard DS2. Um, so be sure to read the written review for a bit more comparison with the Supercard DS2, and thanks for watching.